This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Sure. Uh, I mean, I could ask the, the easy question. What is new with the half-naked Armitage lady? What's new with the half-naked Armitage lady? Well, I hope you don't mind a shift a little bit. A lot of people are asking me to complete the picture and, you know, hire my artist and actually, you know, fill that out. But probably won't do that. What I'm actually doing is I try to focus on one big project with it at a time. So something I've been focusing on lately is uh, reporting. And not that I want to make it generate PDF files because, I mean, I kind of feel like... Not what I really want to do. What, what, we're not going to do crystal reports? <laughs> no, we're not. Because I don't want this to feel like a corporate tool. I want it to feel like something that's fun. That's, that's what we're talking about. That's the difference is the hacker tool and the security professional tool. But why can't the hacker? I mean, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I feel you. So, so reports, though, that's, that's a security tool thing, right? It is, but people actually, as I'm finding out, I didn't know this until I recently did a survey, People are actually using Armitage in their job. A lot of people. I mean, people in government. Like, I found out the Air Force Academy is teaching Armitage in a, a summer program they've got. I also saw on a news uh, channel last night, um, uh, I saw it online, Idaho National Labs using Armitage. Like, you know, it's kind of funny that you mentioned Idaho National Labs because we might know a little bit about them using some of our tools as well. Uh, but you know what it is, though, is it's, it's what people want is something that's effective and easy. And you've taken something that's very effective and then like Armitage just makes it easy. So reporting, that's if that's one of the features they want, that's great that you're implementing that. What kind of what are you running into trying to put that together? Oh, well, it's the hardest part was actually just figuring out what people want because I'm one of the people I self roll all my own tools. And a lot of the tools inspire just by my own needs. And I, I'm used to writing a narrative. I mean, I worked on grammar checking software before, so I can write all day long. So I'm like, okay, what do you need from this tool? Because I mean, I know how to, you know, just copy and paste tables and write a script to parse things. And so putting myself in my user's shoes, I think that's the hardest part. Now, this is coming off the heels of uh, the, the latest release, which implements uh, teaming, right? Right. So I've had teaming in Armitage, and it's been stable since April. Oh. I started working on that around February 2011, and yeah, April's when I finally had it nailed. It really was a painful process to get it there, but like that's my pride and joy in the tool because if you get into a computer, and I get and I can see it pop up at the same time, and both of us can interact with that compromised host simultaneously without like stepping on each other at all. It's fantastic. Yeah, and I love the kind of the the route you've gone for collaboration, and it, it's very hacker, and it's so simple. It's like oh, we need to be able to communicate, and you've just like. Okay, IRC server, right? Well, it's not really an IRC server, but it looks like it because you get like a little chat room in the, uh, in the software along with everything popping up. But actually, I'm an old school IRC guy, man. Grew up on IRC. I learned Unix on IRC. And that was the field. Well, are, are, uh, were you on the F serves on Fnet? Yes, I was. I was. Pound exclamation point where's or whatever it was. I was in pound floods. <laughs> that's kind of where I hung out. <laughs> yeah, so but that's where I learned. And ultimately... I just wanted to have a lot of fun with this tool, and I think that's re really drives it. Is because I wanted to have fun. I was just it's I've got a lot of passion in it, and I think that passion is what makes it me keep going with it. Well, it's definitely shining through. Uh, and w so, what has been the relationship between Armitage now and like Metasploit? Um, fantastic, as you know, um, Armitage is distributed with the Metasploit framework. HD is like really responsive, which is something that really impresses me, because. At 1 a.m., I sent him a message on IRC. I'm like, hey, HD, I can't commit. Something's wrong. He sat there. He troubleshoot, like, went through troubleshooting it with me. It was midnight in Austin where he was at, and he made sure everything was working. And, you know, he helped me out. He's just, like, right there. Dude, that is so cool. Uh, so what, what's next? Well, I only have so many ideas, right? And there's a lot of people. They really, I think, have a lot of good ideas and ways they want to see the software used. I want to make Armitage scriptable like an IRC client. Oh, what, with like, what, with like Perl or TCL or something like that, or or are you talking about like putting together something custom? Something custom. So years ago, I wrote an IRC client called JRC2. It's really cool. It didn't get popular, but it attracted a great scripting community. I mean, scripts from tens of lines to thousands of lines, about 70 on the homepage. You don't have to tell me about scripts. I mean, we we just came out with the rubber ducky with scripting, and who doesn't love it? Because it's like when you take something complicated 
and you make it easy, like like what you've done with Armitage, Metasploit complicated, Armitage easy. Uh, so you do the same thing with that framework. You're going to get tons of developers interested in doing cool stuff with it. Well, my goal is I want people to be able in a declarative way, so they don't have to, you know, have a lot of boilerplate. Just extend Armitage, make it easy to implement other tools, and even cooler, make it possible for like to write a script, a bot externally to join your team and to be able to work with everything and work with Metasploit in an incredibly user-friendly, novice programmer-friendly way. So do you guys have a wiki or where do you get like ideas from the community and stuff like that? Um, it's pretty, so on Facebook, strangely enough, I wanted, had nothing wanting to do with starting this up. There's a guy named Bilal and he's gonna love that game, a shout out. He emailed me, he's like, I want to set up a Facebook fan page. I'm like, really? Who's going to sign up for that? But there's like over 600 people on there, and it's an active community. Like, he'll post something, and then like, you know, 10 people will comment. And I'm like, really? Okay. So there's a lot of back and forth there. Twitter's really great. And people just email me, too. And I love coming to cons and just having conversations with folks. And I found bribing people works really well. I put out the user survey. I mean, we're pretty much just doing this interview because you gave me the sticker as a half-naked lady. Yeah, well, hey, I'm telling you, if Armitage didn't have a half-naked lady, probably no one would notice. So, marketing tip for everybody else, put half-naked anime girls on everything, and that is the path to success. Or, or, or make it cute. I'm just I think, okay, so my humor aside, have fun with it. Yeah, no, no, I totally feel you, and that's what I love because, you know, you, you've definitely in the vein of, you know, in the hacker spirit, uh, I think if we're going to end on anything, it's just that I, I'm fascinated to find out, and again, with the hacker spirit, your software has a theme song? Yes, it does. Not that many people know it, but when I launched it uh, last day of uh, November, thanks to Mubix actually tweeting it out, he was the first person to start it off. I was afraid to launch it. Yeah, yeah. Mubix is my hype man. Yep. Uh, he's got... No, no, I think that's a t-shirt that needs to be made, and everyone can wear it. I'm totally going to wear that. We can do it together. We'll, like, we, we need to have that. Why do we not have that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Mubix, we're getting that shirt. Next con. Next con. No, so, okay, yeah, uh, the theme song. Okay, so when I launched this, I wanted a good website to show people I take the work seriously, documentation, something functionally complete, a, remember, a memorable uh, domain and logo. And I was just experimenting, and I decided to commission a theme song for the YouTube video. You had like branding and marketing and all that in mind from the get-go. See, that's, I, I think that's where like a lot of hackers uh, kind of don't complete the whole package in that you may have something fracking awesome and no way to really communicate it. No, absolutely. So I am that guy. I mean, I mentioned I wrote an IRC client. I was terrible at getting the word out. Um, I wrote a programming language, uh, the one that's going to make our... I did. Wait, wait, what is it? So, wait. You wrote Armitage in your own programming language? What is it called? It's called Sleep. And uh, do you get much of it? Um, sometimes. No, actually, I'm like, I've been really fortunate. Even when I was in the military, I was still able to like sleep all night and get up whenever and kind of roll into work. Oh, yeah? People just put up with my personality, I guess. I don't know why, but they're like, okay, yeah. You well, no, no, you're, you're, you're an interesting character, and I had no idea. I think that adds so much to it just now knowing, like, wow, you wrote your own programming language. That's so cool. What was wrong with, uh, uh, insert any language here, C? Oh, well, C is not like a... Okay, okay, I'm sorry. That's a horrible example. That's Python. Yeah, that, everybody loves Python. So I wanted to make my IRC client, JRC2, scriptable, right? And I wanted to make it declarative. I wanted to feel like MIRC, like something a novice could just pick up and learn. Right, you're right. I wonder how many people watching this now got into programming because they were on MIRC and they're like, oh, egg drop bots and all that other fun stuff. That's me to a T. Yeah. I'm almost sometimes embarrassed to admit it, but I, I, I can't hide it. That's exactly where I can. Uh, I mean, that and like QBasic uh, back in the BBS days. Absolutely. So I wanted something that felt like that, right? With a little bit more power and not some of the ugliness of MIRC, I guess. So I wrote this language that looks a lot like Perl on top of Java, got rid of the warts and things that made no sense to me. And my goal with it when I wrote it was to make it really extensible so you could add new keywords and constructs so the application it was embedded with feels like a first-class citizen of the language. So people approaching it aren't having to learn the application like the programmer does. They're having to learn it in a simple way that a script or approaching it would. So when you say you want to make Armitage uh, extensible, is, is that what you're going to do? Is like you're going to up, you know, have people make scripts for Armitage in sleep? Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to add like keywords and add like a very simple abstraction to work with Metasploit and make it easy to work with the teaming stuff. And it's going to be really cool. Like it's going to be something that just an absolute novice. Like my goal, I'll consider it successful if this is how people learned how to program. 
if like more pen testers like I'm afraid to program, but this looks easy, so I'm gonna start extending Armitage and make that my center. That, that's what it's all about is making it easy. Armitage, she's so easy you can sleep with her. Wait, no, that doesn't sound that's right. Fantastic. <laughs> We should probably wrap this up, but it is, of course, a pleasure talking to you as always. Where can people find out Armitage? They can find out about Armitage at fastandeasyhacking.com or follow me on Twitter. I'm Armitage Hacker. She's fast and easy. <laughs> Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. And be sure to watch the new episode of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben assembles his crack squad of paranormal investigators for a very special Halloween episode. And stay tuned at element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's latest builds from his show. Leo submitted this little bash nibble. He writes, do you ever find yourself tailing a live log file that doesn't include proper timestamps? I know I have, at least not with message. D-message maybe. Anyway, gawk to the rescue. Get this, tail tack f, our log file. In this case, I actually have a ping.log. And we're gonna pipe that to gawk. This is so cool. So now, with a uh, single quotation mark and a squiggly open paren whatever. We can do print space, and then in this case we're going to use the function strf time, and then open paren quote, and now we just give it however we want to format our uh, timestamp. In this case, per, uh, percent y tag percent um, m tag percent d. We'll do year month day. I'm going to give it a space, and then percent capital H for hour colon percent m for minute colon percent s for second close our quotation and our parentheses and then give it a comma dollar zero for our variable in this case the first line of our uh, log file or, or every subsequent line semicolon because we're done with it close our squiggly paren and close that uh, oh, that single quotation mark and now there we go I've got my ping log with a whole bunch of wonderful timestamps on it. Go ahead and send your nibble over to hack5.org slash nibble.